I'm Dave Butfield. These days, fishing is so much more than just soaking your bay in the water. And you may have some questions like, where's the most productive area to go fishing for your target species? When's the best time to catch that species? And of course, what is the best bait to use? Throughout my travels both here in Australia and overseas, I've been very fortunate to wet a line for some pretty amazing species. From Barramundi in India, giant kingfish in New Zealand, and monster brim on the south coast of New South Wales, just to name a few. In that time, I've learnt so many different ways to catch a fish, and now it's my aim to try to pass that information on to you. Or I hook a small one, I'm hooked on fishing. On this week's show, we head an hour and a half north of Sydney to the beautiful Hawkesbury River. The river holds a wide range of different fish species, from monster dewfish, big flathead, squid, hair tail and brim. But today, I'm chasing a fish that I've caught off the rocks, but never caught from a boat in the Hawkesbury, and it's the blackfish. Also, we take a look at how to put a D-loop and peep sight on your bow, and how to stand and use a bow. It's a jam-packed show, so let's get started. Yeah, I got one. Mate, well here we are back on the beautiful Hawkesbury River. Uh, we're Ron Osmond from Hawkesbury Fishing Charters. Mate, we've been here for about 30 seconds yeah. and uh, we're going for blackfish oh. and he's hooked up and uh, he's lost it. So right. we'll, get the, we'll get the next one. <laughs> so today, we, mate, we're doing a bit of variety today. We're going for blackfish. Yeah, yeah. Try the blackfish first and, up while it's running out. And something I've never done in the Hawkesbury is going for blackfish. Um, we may go for squid, some flatties. Uh, earlier on this morning as we went out, we put some uh, traps out there. As you can see here, your typical uh, blackfish float. And we're just letting that run down the current close to the shoreline and wait for that uh, float to drop. Remember, it's slow motion. Don't strike it too quick. Let it go down, give the fish time to feed and uh, away we go. Hey, little fella. It's still a, uh, still a fish, mate. And as simple as that, just uh, let that float drift down, uh, wait for it to sink, and away you go. He's tiny. There you go, it's beautiful. I hope there's a few bigger ones out there. There should be. Now we are using a burley as well, and as you can see in the bucket here, uh, we've just got some sand and a bit of weed mixed into it. And Ron just cut the bit of green weed, mixed it all up, and we just hand, uh, throw a handful over every five or six minutes and uh, let that disperse out and get some biting and keeps them around as well. So it's very important to have some sort of burley on again, mate. Yeah, tiny. Tiny one. Yeah. And we just keep that going down with the sand. It lets it sink down as well. Oop. Off it goes. That's all right. I don't mind him getting off. This is a tiny one. Yeah. Yeah, so burley's very simple, very basic. Uh, our bait's very basic, that's what they eat, the weed. Sometimes with the weeds, a little bit hard to get. And, uh, but uh, we've got a bit here today. That's a bigger fish, mate. <laughs> 20, 28, I'm guessing. Uh, oh, they're definitely better. Do I net it? Nah. We're just lifting, you know. Oh, that's right, I'll just lift right. That's a better fish. Yeah, they're getting bigger. Maybe it's got to be 30. Definitely bigger. You can't even ask you that one for the mother-in-law. <laughs> Might be getting bigger. He wasn't very far from the boat either. What was that? He wasn't very far from the no, boat. No, we've had a couple of hits right. It's 32. only three metres from the boat. Mate, every, you get one every, every yeah, drift yeah, now. Nearly every drift. Another little one there. Is it? Little ish. It's probably still legal. Yeah, yeah, it'd be legal. It's starting to come on now, aren't they? Oh, he's alright. 
He's probably, oh, he's probably what, 26? Yeah, he's tiny. No, no, he's alright. Yeah, he's alright. Tiny says the bloke is not catching him. <laughs> I'll make coffee in a minute, give you a chance. <laughs> G'day, I'm Matt from Garmin. I'm here today to talk to you about our Verb Action Cameras. Everyone these days is using their cameras for filming their activities, whether it be out fishing on the water, whether you're hunting, whether you're riding a motorcycle. We've got two cameras in the range. We've got our Verb Standard Camera, 1080p video, and it has three and a half hour battery life, which is awesome for those all day activities. Then we've got our Verb Elite Camera. Verb Elite brings in Garmin GPS functionality into your video. So you've got all your data there, you can see your speed, etc right there on the video when you, when you download it. Uh, there's lots of accessories in the products. We've got tons of accessories to mount everywhere, on your boats, cars, whatever it might be. We've even got a 50 metre dive case for those of you who want to get down there underneath the water and get those awesome fish shots, that sort of thing. Other great features of the Verb range, large LCD screen so you can line your shots up, view your settings. Big, big button here, on, off, nice and positive, so you know what you're doing. Verb Elite has an iPhone app, so you can control it from your phone. As I said, there's tons of mounts uh, mounted anywhere on the boat, anywhere on the car, whatever it might be. As you can see, it's an awesome range. So if you want to find out more, go to garmin.com.au. Whoa. Another little one. I'd be taking, taking it easier if it was a, uh, a good fish, you know? Yeah, the, yeah, exactly. He's not bad. That's all right. Thirty centimeters. It's not a bad fish, mate. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that fish. Look at that. <laughs> That's the smallest one so far this morning. Anyway, it's uh, it's still a fish. It's still a fish. If you if you just drop your float in, it'll just run out by itself. So you just hold it like that, and if you get it down, you can just grab it like that. Because as soon as you, if you pull without grabbing it, it'll just you'll get a big knot. And you, as soon as you go down, you grab it, lift, and you've got the other hand to use the reel. So that's, that's your drag, those fingers. Good work, mate. Well, try a new spot and get different, get bigger fish, eh? Mate, it's weird too. We are just talking about there's not much current here where we are, and uh, the water's brown. Might net, net this one. Yeah. If you want to grab that, it's Wait. just hanging up there behind it. Okay, yep. Awesome. That's a great fish, mate. Good fish. Awesome fish. Take a look at that one. What you we spat have? that hook right as you hit the net. Yep, straight out. Mate, that is a great fish. A lot bigger than what we just caught. Mate, that is an awesome black fish. Look good at that. Fish. That is a beautiful fish. Look at the meat on that. Yeah. yeah you get a good fillet off him. Well, you reckon that'd be 40. You'd be close to it. You'd be close. That's 40 centimetre, yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's probably just under the 40. 30, yep. 39 and a half. Well, I've just won that back in. You must have hit it at the same time, eh? Yeah. Good fish too, mate. That's not a good fish. There you go. Beautiful. Hey, he's over 30, isn't he? Yeah, beautiful. That was, that was weird, because I was just bringing my bait in, and all of a sudden, uh, it just went straight down. So he must have been just at the end of it, when yeah. it started to... Probably just come in to have a go at it at the same yeah. time as you. There you go. He's probably what, 36? Yeah. Something Good like fish. that. So nothing wrong with that. So he can come home for dinner for me, so I can get a couple to take home for the family. So beautiful and nice and thick as well. There's a lot of lot yeah. of meat on these fish. Good fillets. It's really easy to fillet and skin. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, not many bones. Want me to sort him out? Yes, thanks, buddy. Well, we've just moved locations, and as you see, we pulled in some great blackfish. Now the tide's starting to slow up, and they're going to go for brim. We're at Flint and Steel Reef. This is a great place to catch brim, but you need the turn of the tide when that tide's slowing up. Uh, we're using light weight, so say a uh, 01 to 02 ball sinker, um, and we're dropping that down, and we're using pillies and prawns. As you can see here, you're like a hawksy prawn and a pilly, cutting it up. Small baits. I like the pilma prawns as well and uh, drop that down and hopefully the fish will jump onto it. Good work, mate. 
That is smashed. Starting it. to hot up a little bit now, isn't it? Getting a bit better. Yeah, it's starting to come around. You hit it really hard, this one. Mm. Could be a good fish. Could be a big yakka. Nah, <laughs> too big for a yakka, this one. Oh, nice. Nice brim. Nice brim. Woo! Getting that is a good brim. Well done, mate. Slowly getting bigger. That's a great brim. Anyone would be happy with a fish like that. Hi, I'm Stefan from Benton Archery. Today we're going to go over a couple of the fundamentals of setting up your bow. We'll put a peep sight and a D-loop on there. We'll go a quick chat about release aids and then we're going to go have a shot. We'll show you uh, your stance and your anchor point. Alright, let's go. So first up, we're going to start with the D-loop. Now you're going to need a couple of, of tools to do this job. You're going to need a lighter to melt the end of the cord off. You're going to need a pair of pliers, preferably long nose, to, uh, to pull it tight and, uh, and some scissors to cut off the D-loop material. And then the most important thing of all is some D-loop cord itself. So first thing that we do is start by fluffing the end out because we're going to melt that off and make a little mushroom. So just fluff it out so it's a, a little bit splayed. Take your lighter and then very carefully, we're going to melt that down, place the D-loop around the string. Now we're going to move that to closer to the knock point and come back round over the top, underneath and through, just like that. At this point we want to get that nice and tight so we're going to grab it with some pliers and pull on it pretty tight. So now we just do exactly the same knot on the other side, back around under itself and then back through again. We're going to take our scissors now and trim the end off and then we're going to take the lighter and melt this one off too just like we did on the top. Making sure here that we keep the flame above the bow string. The last thing you want to do is melt through the string. So we push the pliers through and make it nice and tight. Now we've left a little gap underneath the knock point, so that's where our arrow is going to sit. And uh, once it's all nice and tight, that's, that's the D-loop now where our release aid's going to clip onto. Next we're going to be putting the peep sight into the bow, so uh, important things to have for this job is obviously you need your peep sight. The other tools that are really good to have is a string separator, which makes life a lot easier. We're going to need some cord to tie it in with. We carefully Press this through the string, because we've had a peep in this bow before, we should find the centre of the string pretty easily. And then we're just going to open it up. Now what we want to do is actually pop the peep sight itself into the middle of the string. So now we just need to get it all tied in. Just going to get some cord, and we're going to do a, uh, a little knot under the string, and then one on top of it, and then one underneath, and one on top. What we're going to do is tie a knot both sides, one top and one bottom. Probably do about six or seven on each side of the string. So then we're going to finish the knot by doing a double knot. We're going to very, very, very carefully trim it off so there's only a little bit hanging out. And then again with our lighter, like we did with the D loop, we're just going to melt the end of that down. Now you've got to be very, very careful we don't let that flame anywhere near the bow string. All right, then we did the same time, not on the top. All right, so I'm just gonna melt that down again. Then once again, very careful of the bow string. Now we're just gonna push those two knots up nice and tight around the peep sight. And that stops the peep from being able to move. We just need to attach the cord and then tie the other, cord, the other end of the cord onto the cable. If your bow's got a split in the cable like this one does, just tie it on right at the base of the split. So once it's tied in, what we then need to do is go through and just check the height of it, make sure it's comfortable. We'll, uh, we'll have a quick look at that out in the range. So now what we're going to talk about is the really important thing of using the proper forming technique to shoot the bow real consistently. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is start with our stand. So we're going to make sure our feet are shoulder width apart. We're standing side onto the target. The next really important thing is your grip on the bow. Now we call it a grip, but that's actually not what you do. You just let the bow sit really relaxed in your hand. Anchor point. So it's really important to have a consistent anchor point. So anchor point is where we have the string touching from the tip of our nose, down through our mouth, to underneath the jaw. We're trying to feel the same points again. It's all about consistency and making sure it's the same. Once again, I'm gonna make sure I'm not holding the bow, nice and relaxed. Draw back. 
So see, I've got the string touching on the tip of my nose and down through the corner of my mouth. And that's so that I can feel it each time and come to the same position. The release aid up hard up underneath the jaw. So once I've got all that in the right position, I can slowly squeeze, take the shot. More often than not, out in the real world, you don't have the luxury of shooting on a nice, flat, open area like we were a second ago. You tend to be stuck on some pretty hilly terrain and shooting up and down hills. Here, as you can see, it's quite a steep bit of land, so I've got one leg a lot higher than the other. Now, when you're shooting up or down hills, it's important that you try to move as much from the waist as possible. You're not just lifting the bow up or pointing it down. You're actually trying to keep that relationship in your top, the upper half of your body the same. So, all right, I'm just gonna Clip the release aid on, draw the bow back. I'm gonna to try to bend as much as I can from the waist. And then once I'm in position, I can take my shot. Yeah, we've gone over a lot today. We've talked about the peep sight and the D loop and how to get them on the bow properly. And then the really important thing we've just shown you is some technique and form and how to do it all correctly. So if you ever need any more information, you can come by our Sydney store or else you can visit us online at bensonarchery.com.au Euro Optics is an Australian owned and designed sports brand with innovative sunglass design and superior lens technology. The Euro Collection uses the latest in high performance polarised lens technology to meet the demands of the modern angler and sports person. Try the new Mako with the wraparound styling with the added benefits of floating frames. Euro has a massive range of sunglasses to choose from. To see the full range or find your closest dealer, go to gibsoneyewear.com.au. It's got a bit of a kick on it, but it says big yakin sometimes too. Oh, they get massive here. And it is? Silver, come on silver. Come on silver. Oh, look silver. It's a bream. Beautiful. Yeah, little fella. But little you're... fella, no big ones, but uh, it's still legal fish if you wanted yeah. to take it home. And this is the targeted species. So there you go, there's our bream. I just broke that uh, leader. I don't want to try to get that hook out of the fish's mouth if you end up doing more damage. So he's a legal bream, um, but uh, we're starting to get a few more bites now. That tide's slowing up. So that's all we're waiting for at the moment. I reckon we'll get a few more by the end of our little session here. Well, let's get him back in. See you later, mate. Beautiful. Feels a lot better, mate. Yeah, it can't be a yakka, can it? Better weight. Yeah, definitely a brim. There's some silver there. Beautiful. Hey, it's all right. Nice. We're slowly getting there. We're ticking them over, mate. Oh, what do you get, mate? Just a little yakka. All these brim here are just so fat too, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, all full of our burly. It's pretty easy fishing, like we said. You know, just a simple rig. Uh, you can catch some fantastic fish, and, and we could sit here for the next, you know, half an hour, 40, minute, 40 probably, minutes until that tide turns. You could probably fish the whole tide because it's only a real small high tide. Okay, yep. So yep. You, could, you could probably fish the whole tide here. And just be picking <coughs> up brim like this. Yep. Great, all right. So, mate. And off he goes. Beautiful. Mate, I miss mine. Oh, yeah, that's a brim, mate. Is that a fish? Yeah. Be getting a lot more brim if these yakas went around. There's heaps of. Definitely a better fish for sure. Pull him up. And there you go, another nice brim. Just got a rag, easy to hold him. Get that hook out right in the corner. This is good for us and good for the fish. Pull that straight out. And uh, there's our brim if you stop moving around, little mate. So fat, but like uh, I said, there's heaps of burly in there. 
and that's why his belly's so fat. So if you uh, took him home and cut him open, there'll be yeah, full of bow burly in there. So <laughs> look how fat he is. That's only, oh, might, be. might be a little brim. Oh no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's only downside, we need to burly, we've got to keep on burly and then that's part of the secret of, of getting fish. But the only downside is you're burling up the bait fish as well, like your yakas and that. So um, you just got to put up with it, try to get past them and get to the brim. Um, but you know, if we pull in five or six yakas to a brim, well, what do you do? We've got some bait for the next day's fishing and, uh, and we're still getting some brim. Well here we are mate, back at the boat ramp. Mate, what an amazing day. We got some blackfish to kick off the show and it was pretty easy fishing. Yeah, yeah, that was good. I hadn't fished from them for a week and a half so it was always hit and miss, but yeah, they were good. That was good though there. But after we moved location, we got the bigger fish. Yeah, got the bigger ones around, the, yeah, just around the corner, not too far. And everywhere I've tried down here, there's blackfish. You just got to try and find the better spots. And, and if it's not good one day, it doesn't mean it's not going to be good the next day. So That's right. And then we moved to Flint and Steel. Uh, it was blowing its head off. It was yep. probably blowing about 20 knots. So it made a hard fishing, but we still got fish. Yeah, still got fish. You get that burly going and, and peeled prawn down the burly trail if there's something around there worth it. Now, mate, uh, if anyone wants to come out, um, you take out families, groups and singles? Yeah, families, groups, singles. You just book the whole boat, so I, I don't mix people together. So. Yep. Cost okay. you a little bit more if there's single people, two people, but you get the whole boat, so. Now we're coming in our winter months, what do you usually target? Uh, the brim, the blackfish, and while we're fishing for brim, we catch heaps of trevally and leather jackets and tailor, and, yep. and soon the uh, schools of salmon should be coming good in, fun. so great fun. Great fun chasing them around the lures, they jump out of the water and they're, and they're a good sized fish, you get them three, four kilos, so. Yeah, it's good fun. If you want to have a great time, give Ron a call at Hawksby Fishing Charters. Jump on our website, hooktv.com.au. Click on the link and give this bloke a call because you will have an amazing day on the water. Mate, I've got to thank you again. No worries. It's always a pleasure. We'll do something again uh, soon. We'll, yeah. find, we'll find something to do. We always have a great time together. Yeah, yeah, winter time. But uh, usually summertime is the better fishing down. You get the dewies, the kingies, flathead, crabs, which, yeah. Yeah, it's always something to catch up here. There's always something. I hope you enjoyed the show. I've had a fantastic time. I'll see you next week somewhere around Australia. Water makes it clear to see That vision's just like therapy The worries of the world all just drift away When I'm out here fishing for the day if I hook a big one or I hook a small one, I'm hooked on fishing again.